Take a moment and picture your favorite childhood bicycle. What did it look like? What color was it? Did you have one of those weird banana seats that used to be so popular? Or perhaps you were the creative type with cards in your spokes and streamers coming from your handlebar. My bike was a bright red Schwinn with a cushy black seat and these sweet pegs on my front wheel. <laughs> I rode my bike everywhere as a child, to school, to my friend's house, to the pool. I even rode it on an ill-fated attempt to run away from home. You see, as children, without a car or a driver's license, it is the bike that provides us with the ultimate sense of freedom and independence. Now think back to your most recent interaction with a bike. When was it? What were you doing? Perhaps you commuted to campus today on a bike. Or maybe you went for a ride along the curvy roads of coastal California. As adults, the bike provides us with a different type of freedom. Freedom from work, freedom from stress, freedom from routine. The bike scratches our itch for adventure and pro provides us with a brief escape from reality. I've been riding bikes my entire life. For a period of time, I even raced mountain bikes professionally on the World Cup circuit. It's easy for many of us to view the bike through the lens of a child, a weekend warrior, or maybe even a professional. But a few years ago, I began to wonder if there's something more to the bike. What if that freedom that a bike provides is more impactful than just the independence of a child or the exercise of an adult? What if the bike could inspire us to tackle some of the world's most complex problems? Allow me to take you on a bit of a journey. It's July 2009 in a tiny village in rural Zambia. Belita, a 15-year-old girl who lives in the village, wakes up before dawn to feed her family's chickens before school. Belita commutes daily to Chalala Basic School, three miles away over unmaintained dirt roads. Belita, unlike many of us, Belita does not have access to a car or a school bus. So Belita has to make this long walk on foot. Now let's think about this for a second. Three miles on foot every day, each direction. That's like walking from this classroom to the Dutch Goose. <laughs> Twice a day, barefoot, on dirt roads, on the hottest day of the year in Palo Alto. I also don't think there's a juicy hamburger and GSB foam at the end of this road. <laughs> but seriously, how good would your school attendance be if you had to walk that far to get to school? I'll have to admit, I don't think mine would be very good. On this particular day, it takes Belita 90 minutes to get to school. And by the time she arrives, she is late and she's fatigued from the long commute. Belita did not have time that morning to complete her homework before school, so she quickly falls behind. Belita attends school only three days a week, and her academic performance is low. Now let me ask you, what do you think would happen if, Belita, if we gave Belita a bike? Fast forward to 2011 in the same tiny village in rural Zambia. Belita wakes up before dawn to feed her family's chickens before school. Belita then collects her new bike that she recently received from World Bicycle Relief, a charity organization that delivers purpose-built bikes in places like Zambia. The three-mile commute to, to school takes only 20 minutes on a bike, so Belita arrives on time, prepared with energy to focus. Belita now attends school five days a week, and her academic performance is soaring. The bike has reinvigorated Belita's energy towards life, and she's now on track to achieving her lifelong dream of becoming a nurse. You know, Scientific American once published a really great study that determined which animal species consume the least energy to travel a fixed distance, point A to point B. We're talking efficiency of motion. Perhaps not surprisingly, the condor and its ability to soar on its huge 10-foot wingspan ranked number one. The human strolled across the finish line an underwhelming third of the way down the list. Turns out we're not designed for speed or efficiency. We are, however, quite adept at overcoming our deficiencies using our brains. Researchers then re-ran the study, providing the human with a single tool. You got it, a bike. With the aid of a bike, the human rose all the way to the top of the list. Above the condor is the most efficient animal species on the planet. Behold, human creativity and the power of the bicycle. My friends, 
The bike is an incredibly powerful tool. With the aid of a bicycle, a human can carry five times as much weight and can travel four times faster than a person on foot. That trip to the market that once yielded uh, 40 pounds of rice now yields 200. That hour and a half commute is now 20 minutes. These statistics are staggering. Staggering enough to be life-changing for Belita and others who do not have access to modern forms of transportation. Studies have proven that in places like Zambia, a bike can increase academic performance by 60%. That's the difference between a GMAT score of 440 and a GMAT score of 700. <laughs> I don't need to get the dean down here to tell you how meaningful that is. The bike has the power to free people from poverty. Now that is what I call freedom. But not only is the bike a really powerful tool, it's also a very simple tool. Two wheels, pedals, handlebar and a seat, connected by a simple metal frame. You can even take a class here at Stanford where you learn to build your very own bike from scratch. And the bike is old technology. The bike was invented in Germany in 1817, and much of the original construction has remained unchanged in the last 200 years. Look, I don't mean to suggest that the bike is without its challenges. We need to fix flat tires and repair used bikes. But if we can overcome these small hurdles, we have such an incredible tool. The bike is powerful, and yet it's simple. The bike has the ability to meaningfully improve huge global problems like illiteracy, poverty, and hunger. But basic transportation is just is, is the bike's core competency, and basic transportation is only one of thousands of big, hairy problems we face in our world today. Can we take what we've learned from the bike and apply it to these other issues as well? I think so. You know, here at Stanford, we're encouraged to tackle big problems and change our world for the better. While inspiring, this mandate is also daunting. I find myself wondering, why am I more qualified than the many brilliant minds that came before me? Don't I need significant financial resources to even begin? I don't know about you, but I often feel overwhelmed by the enormity of our world's problems. Fix poverty, cure cancer, eradicate malaria. I can feel my anxiety levels rising already. <laughs> my overwhelmed mind wants to give up before I've even begun. The bike, though, has become my source of inspiration. When I'm feeling overwhelmed by an impossibly complicated task, I think back to Belita and the impact that a humble, everyday bike has had on her life. I gain confidence knowing that incremental solutions to some of Zambia's worst problems don't require a rocket scientist or a billion dollars. The bike is a great example of how a simple tool can have a profound impact on our world. Maybe I am up to the task, and maybe you are too. I'll leave you with this. Sometimes we don't need billion dollar R&D budgets to tackle big problems. All we need is creativity and a bit of perspective. World Bicycle Relief is changing the world through the power of the bicycle. What other everyday tools are we overlooking? Simple, sustainable solutions exist for many of the world's most complex problems. In some cases, a meaningful solution may be parked in your garage with a flat tire and a thin coat of dust. All you have to do is reimagine its potential. Thank you.